Let's take a look at interval notation. Interval notation is a way of describing a set of numbers. Now we've been describing sets of numbers in the past using things like a number line. We could say that a number is in between 3 and 10, simply with a couple of dots on a number line and a solid fill in the middle. We could use inequalities to describe it, saying 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 10. Those two methods are a little bit clumsy. I can write that same thing using interval notation, saying my numbers are between 3 and 10. Let's uh, go into a little more detail of how we do interval notation works. In inequalities, we've got two sets, or two basic sets. We've got greater than and less than, and we have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. In interval notation, greater than and less than, the ones that do not have the equals part, are described in round brackets, and the ones that do have the equal signs are described with square brackets. Now you have to be careful because as well as round brackets, if I was going to say between 2 and 17, that could look like the uh, xy coordinates of 2, 17, the Cartesian coordinates. So you have to be careful when using interval notation that you, that you don't get those two mixed up. Whereas I mean, if I was if I had square brackets, I mean, it's fairly obvious we don't use square brackets for Cartesian coordinates. Right. Now, it's also possible to mix and match these a little bit. But let's say if I have, uh, let's say we've got x square, x in between minus 2, less than or equal and 5. If I want to write this using interval notation, well, my lowest number is minus 2, and that's always on the left. My high number is 5, and that's on the right. And I look at what type of inequality. These ones do not have the equal sign, so I'm going to put round brackets. If I have it the other way around, x, where x is between minus 7 and minus 3. In this time, case, because I've got the equal sign in there, so I start at minus 7 is my lowest, minus 3 is my largest, I'm going to put square brackets on it. Now if I happen to have one that has both mixed together, I've got x where x is between, is greater than 1, but less than or equal to 5. This one, I mean, I, my low number is a 1, my high number is a 5, but on this side, because I don't have an equal sign on the left, I have a round bracket, and on the right, because I do have an equal as part of that inequality, I have a square. So you can mix and match the square and round brackets, and that tells you something about your question. Okay, what do you do in a case where if I am given something like x, where x is greater than negative 5, I'm sorry, x is less than negative 5. So that's anything where x is smaller than 5. Well, I don't really have a pair of numbers. I've got a minus 5, but what's my lowest number? Well, there is no lowest number because it keeps on going forever. So I'm, we're going all the way to negative infinity on that side. So now negative, as soon as I'm dealing with an infinity, there's no n number, there's no exact number. So as soon as I've got an infinity sign in here, the side of the infinity sign has to have a round bracket. Now a sign with a side with a minus with a number on it, well, we've got a little bit of leeway. I look up at my inequality, my inequality does not have an equal sign, so I put a round bracket. Works the same way if we're going to go to the positive side. x where x is greater than or equal to 2. Right? Well, 
I look at that, my smallest possible number is going to be a 2. But, I mean, and it's going to be anything bigger than 2, so there's no set biggest number, so I have to use infinity. Now it can equal exactly 2, so I put a square bracket on it. But, I mean, there's no end to the infinity, so I put a round bracket on that. I've got negative infinity, positive infinity. And you have to differentiate between the two. Because if you just say infinity, we assume it's off to the right. Negative infinity is going off to the left. That being said, if I wanted to show where x is all real numbers, oh, my pen isn't looking right, all real numbers, Well, it's going to go from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity, and there's my answer right there. Now, sometimes you're going to get into a little more complicated situation where you've kind of got two regions that x can fall in. Um, you have to be able to describe both of these. So I can't describe it with a single uh, interval. If I were to take the left-hand side, I can describe this left-hand side with, well, goes all the way to negative infinity and up to negative 2. The open dot means it doesn't, it's everything up to negative 2 but not including it. So I put an open bracket. This right hand side here I would describe as it starts at 4, goes up to infinity. Now it actually includes 4 because it's got a closed dot. So I'm going to put a square bracket and you always put a round bracket on infinity. Now I have to put both of these two together. So what we're going to use is we're going to write it as the left hand side, negative infinity, cause of common negative two, square bracket, round bracket. And we use union, square bracket, four, common negative eight. So that means it is the interval from negative infinity up to negative 2 and the interval from 4 to positive infinity. So that means union means and. It does not include the stuff in the middle. And once again, always start with the lowest on the left and the highest on the right.